You're going to love today's show. A physician at the opening, a physician at the closing, and all me in the middle. In the middle, I'm going to be talking about more and more folks you know our plants are becoming drugs. So why don't we eat our plants now so we don't need those pieces of plants when we get sick? And then I'm also going to go to Facebook and answer a couple of questions I get on my live Facebook show that I didn't have a chance to do live. Opening the show is Dr. Fred Pescatori, a buddy of mine for many, many years, talking about the Dr. O'Hara difference. We're talking probiotics. Toward the end of the show, Dr. John Trowbridge, my good friend from Houston, drops in. Dr. Trowbridge, how do we treat mycotoxins released by fungus in our body. Stay tuned, great show in line. Today's Know the Cause is brought to you by Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. Discover the Dr. O'Hara difference. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Dr. Fred Pescatori joins me right now. We always have fun behind the scenes. Uh, Dr. Pescatori and I go back. He's a New York physician. We go back a lot of years together. And I'm aging, and I'll be darned if he isn't. So the book he's written, The A-List Diet, he talks about lose up to 15 pounds. This is true. I see so many books written by people, and then you get to meet the people. The book and the person doesn't go together. And look and feel younger in just two weeks. Okay, look. Here is Dr. Fred Pescatori. Uh, this man is 105 years old. No, Dr. Pescatori uh, is aging extremely well. He talks about this in the book, and I'm going to teach you within the next few minutes how to get this book free. You'll want to get it. It's going to be on the New York Times bestselling. But you reference several times in here probiotics. I mean, in your practice, they're that important, correct? Oh, they are, again... There are, I always call it my desert island list of, list of supplements, right? And probiotics, Dr. O'Hara's probiotics specifically, makes that list year and year and okay. year after. Okay, you said Dr. O'Hara specifically. I walked into a health food store in Los Angeles the other day, <laughs> and there's, uh, mostly in the refrigerated section, there's a dozen new ones. I'm seeing all new probiotics. Every major nutrition company now has a probiotic. Well, not only that, you're seeing it in in tropic. You're seeing it in orange juice. You yeah, know, you're that's seeing right, it. In, that's right. I mean, they're they're adding it to all these foods because everybody is starting to understand that probiotics are good for you. Um, but are, is that the correct delivery system? Yeah. Probably not. But this delivery system, you can't beat the delivery system of Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. Teach me a little bit about these three P's, prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics. This is fascinating. Okay, well, prebi prebiotics um, is included in, uh, in the Dr. O'Hara's probiotic. It is a food that the probiotics actually use to live. Um, I think I need to take a step back because Dr. O'Hara's probiotics is an actual live system. So when you pick up one of those capsules, what you are looking at, those bugs are alive. When you get most, uh, most probiotics, they're freeze dried. So that means you don't know how many you're getting, what's in there, you really don't know that. Or Dr. Pescatoria says 50 zillion. Is that, is that important? No, Okay. Uh, because when you take something like that, your body can actually build up an immune response to all these new bugs that it's taking in. Yeah, what, Dr., um, what Dr. O'Hara's probiotics does, it has the food that the, bu that, the, that the bugs need, so that's the prebiotics. Then you have the probiotics, which are the good bacteria. And, and Dr. O'Hears has multiple strains, which is what you're looking for in a probiotic. So it's got multiple strains and it works with your body's own ecology. So it works with the bugs your body has in order to help them produce. Because our bug, my bug's different from yours. It depends on where you live in the world, in the country, what you eat, what you don't eat. All of that will, will determine what your body ecology is. Yeah. So that's where the probiotic part comes in, because everybody knows probiotic, good bacteria, I need those, blah, blah, blah. What they don't realize is they need multiple strains, they don't need billions and billions, they just need enough. Okay. And then, you've, so you've got the prebiotic, 
which helps feed the, the, the probiotic. Right. Then you've got the probiotic to do the job of yep. repopulating and recolonizing the gut. And then you've got the postbiotics. Postbiotics are the actual nutrients that the, um, the probiotic allows to grow in the body. So it can produce things like short chain fatty acids, a lactic acid bacteria, all of these things that really no other probiotic can really do because it is a, just like, I, like we started talking about, it's that complete system. So you've got pre, pro, and post. And post is really what you're looking for because those are the nutrients that your body's gonna need to stay, to get healthy and stay that way. Post is what you create from taking that every day. So there's a dual benefit, you know, over and above just tummy problems, bloating, belching, gas, constipation, your doctor will tell you about that. Oh, by the way, if you've been on an antibiotic, always chase with probiotic. Who'd have thought if when you wrote that? If your doctor thinks to t tell if you your that. Doctor th who'd have thought when you wrote that 25 years ago that they'd now be saying, okay, that's good. Um, this is a unique probiotic. You heard Dr. Pescatori say, and this is one of the neatest things I can tell you about this product. <clears throat> it's living. It has its own food supply in there, all these bacteria. If you bite into one of these capsules, right, you'll taste its food supply. Micro amounts, the head of a pin of these foods in there. And then folks, this is, uh, being a unique probiotic, you just give it a few weeks, try it for a period of time. I now take two of these. I take two a day as well. Okay, Reg Active mm -hmm. uh, and the Dr. O'Hara's probiotic, different, right? I'm not duplicating my efforts. Not at all. Reg Active produces glutathione in the body. Glutathione, people, ha you've got to know that word. It's going to be the next new buzzword. Glutathione. Glutathione. It is one of the best antioxidants we have known to man. Helps the liver, helps the body. Difficult Gotta to get, it. unless you, you run at IV or, yeah. or take this. Uh, Reg Active. Yeah, because there's a lot of glutathione products on the market, but Reg Active is the only one that actually works because I test it with blood levels. Here's a double win for you. The book, The A-List Diet, is yours free when you buy two of the 60-count Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. Study it. This book is a genius, just like its author. Thank you so much for coming in. Very, very good book. Thanks a lot, Doug. Thank Many of you know earlier this year I was invited to speak to oncologists, cancer doctors, with regard to nutrition in a cancer patient's diet. I mean, this to me is fascinating, and yet so many oncologists feel, ah, diet means nothing. You got a tumor in your body. It's being fed. Where do you think drug companies ought to go? Plants. Folks, that's what my whole lecture was on. I chose randomly a dozen phytochemicals, plant chemicals, and realized they all had antifungal properties and then recommended them, you know, for use to the doctors. But pharmaceutical companies are going to go this way someday, right? So I saw this headline I want to share with you. New method for tapping vast plant pharmacopoeia to make more effective drugs. Aha, they're doing it. Plant Cell Journal 417. Geneticists, there is a giveaway, genetically modifying. Geneticists have developed an effective method for identifying the plant genes that produce the chemical ammunition plants use to protect themselves from predation and is a natural source of many important drugs. Predation, oh yeah, predators. In an ecosystem, which a plant is, predation is a biological interaction between a predator, that's the caveman, and the cow that's running from him, and what he feeds on, okay? So that says Wikipedia. Bacteria and fungi are plant predators. They grow in the soil. That's where bacteria and fungi are, and they try and kill the plant. Uh, to kill them, plants make antibiotics and antifungals. Okay, so far, so good. You and I know this, and you and I know the wheat, spinach, and kale, and green leafy vegetables. It isn't just calcium we're getting from those things. It's so many other things. We're, we're eating antimicrobials when we eat those foods. And folks, I have long lectured that cancer is a microbial disease. I think fungus I, makes a poison. I know fungus makes a poison called a mycotoxin. I know that at least liver cancer is intimately linked with one of those mycotoxins. And that food that makes that mycotoxin or the mold that makes that mycotoxin is in our corn supply. It's in our wheat supply. It's in our peanut supply. So we need to be careful. Not a lot, but a little. But if we're eating those foods over and over again, we may get in trouble. 
If you don't know fungus, you can't fully understand medicine or nutrition. Look at who said that. Brilliant guy. That's me. These researchers are trying to harvest the plant genes that have antibacterial and antifungal properties and invent patented, there's the key word, plant drugs that would become the base of what they quote, many important drugs. I want you to know, folks, look, these are good people. They're really smart. They're out at a major university. And they go to work every day like you and I do, and they say, oh boy, this is exciting. If we can harvest these genes that happen to be antifungal, we can make many important drugs. Why not tell the patients who are in your hospital to eat those plants, okay? That's where I'm going with all this. With all due respect, if we would eat the plants first, would we even need the many important drugs that they are going to develop for us to get better? When did logic leave science? Why are oncologists running IV chemotherapy with Twinkies and soda pops and cookies? That's so illogical to me. We're gonna use this poison, hopefully it'll kill the cancer first before it kills you, and you can eat anything you want. Here's what I found. I found hundreds of really good, caring oncologists. This was brand new to them, folks. They had no idea diet played a role in helping their patient get better. Doctors tend to think of nutrition as just satisfying you, you know, while your disease is growing. It initiated your disease more than likely, and it could take you down the wrong diet. So in summary, mom was right, you guys. I've been saying this for the <clears throat> 17 years I've been on the air. My mom always used to make us, no, you're not going to the sandlot and playing ball until you eat your vegetables. You know, there were times I weighed that. Ugh, vegetables, broccoli, ugh but I did it to play baseball. Eat plants now for great health, or eat laboratory-developed pieces of plant genes later for your bad health. So says me. Bottom line to all this, folks, I stood there in front of all these doctors, and some of them, their mouths dropped open. They had no idea that nutrition, improper nutrition could cause cancer right? And that good nutrition, once your patients have this disease, is absolutely essential. I hope a few doctors at a time, I am changing minds, because when you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But when you teach a doctor about fungus and the cause of cancer, he helps all of his patients. He eats for a lifetime. Hope that helps. You know, I do a show, a live show, uh, right here from this set on Facebook a uh, night or two a week. And many of you watch. If you're one of the tens of thousands of people that have watched, thank you so much. Many of you don't know about it. What I try and do is answer your questions. Well, that started last year with, you know, 12, 15, 20 questions. And now there are hundreds and hundreds of questions that come in. And we try and sort them out and answer them on the air if I can. I just want to guide you, folks. Look, we'll send you a link to when the show's going to start live, or you can watch it that night. Here are some of the typical questions that I tend to get. I would like to see more information about fungus connection, the fungus connection to dementia and Alzheimer's and other mental issues typically associated with aging, uh, asked Marty. Uh, Marty, a study done 2015, medical website, uh, talked about cadavers. 21 people died, and they wanted to see if any of those patients you know, had fungus in their body. 11 of them did. 11 of them had fungus in their brain and in other tissues. Guess what those 11, not the other 10, guess what those 11 died of? All of them. Alzheimer's disease. All of the sudden in 2015 there was this buzz. I thought finally they were going to say, my gosh, maybe dementia, maybe other cerebral anomalies, but certainly Alzheimer's is linked to fungus. We found fungus in their brain. N not a word. So you have to watch Know the Cause uh, to get this information. If I had Alzheimer's, I would run to my doctor, my neurologist, and say, look, I want to try Diflucan or Sporinox, some systemic antifungal medication. Then I want to juice every day with live antifungal plants. Uh, I want to take antifungal drugs. I want to uh, take eat ant uh, antifungal foods, the Kaufman diet phase one I would follow. And I would get on board with seeing if I could self-treat this with my doctor's help. Doug, I recently watched your show on washing the mold from your nostrils. Oh, I remember doing that. That was with Dr. Don Dennis. 
I tried to see if I could get rid of my allergy symptoms, runny nose, persistent cough that I've had since the 1990s. I have tried everything and nothing gets rid of my cough. Do you, have, uh, do you think my lungs could be infected? Yeah. And Linda, I've got to tell you, I'm not the only one. You've seen Dr. Soraya on this show several times. He's local in Denton, Texas. Uh, this is a doctor who attended, I was the keynote speaker on mycotoxicoses. He was one of the many physicians that attended. And afterwards he said, Doug, you blew my mind. I look in lungs all the time and then write prescriptions for antibiotics. Really? Maybe you should write prescriptions for antifungals. He is now doing that over and over and over again. Interesting report. He tells me that he does bronchoscopies, a lot of them. And he said nine of 10 of these patients he used to hand antibiotics to now get antifungals and learn about the Kaufman diet. And he says, sometimes I get emotional. Why didn't I know this the past 25 years? Why? Dr. Soraya, this wasn't taught to you. You're board certified in lungology, and nobody told you this. Nobody told your doctor, your lungologist, your allergist, et cetera. So Linda, what I would do is ask your ENT, your nose and throat doctor, for a prescription of antifungals. Doc, I wanna try Diflucan, it's a bloodstream antifungal. I wanna try Nystatin, because most people with allergies also have tummy problems, bloating, belching, gas, constipation, et cetera and then follow religiously Kaufman's phase one diet for one month, Diflucan, Nystatin, the Kaufman diet, and then you tell me how your allergies are. Finally today, if you were, di oh boy, I hate these. If you were diagnosed with cancer, what would be the first thing you should do? Carol, look, I'm a praying man. If I'm walking, I go into the doctor with a little lump on my neck and he checks me out and says, hate to tell you, Doug, and I'm sorry I was 15 minutes late, you have cancer. Most people tell me, because I've questioned, I've interviewed a lot of people who have cancer or had cancer, they go to their car driving out of there and they start crying. They can't even make it to pay the ticket to get out of the parking lot. I'm a praying man. Okay, Lord, what lesson is in this for me? What should I do? Folks, I have documented and published widely that cancer and fungus look very much alike. Fungus grows in a sack to protect itself from our white blood cells eating it up. Right? Wait a minute, tumors grow in sacs. Yeah, this one liberates lactic acid, a poison. Oh, so does the cancer tumor. This one needs sugar to thrive. So does the cancer tumor. Folks, when you look at the parallels between uh, an ascomycetes, sac fungus, and cancer, they run parallel. I've been teaching this to doctors. Good news, you've heard on this show, several doctors are now ordering antifungals for their patients. So you have to understand, folks, when a doctor says this is really, really bad, it is. Then I would look at nutrition. I'm a guy, you're staring at a guy who will not take chemotherapy and radiation. Easy to say, sitting on a TV set. Difficult to do if I heard the words, you have cancer. Okay, now don't go away because Dr. John Trowbridge is gonna answer that question I opened the show with. How do you treat mycotoxins that spew from these poisonous fungi? Okay, he'll answer that. Friends, joining me right now is a dear friend of mine for far too many years. We used to have dark hair together <laughs> way, way back in the 70s when we met. Dr. John Trowbridge, who's one of the few yeast syndrome. It isn't a symptom, you know, if you've got yeast here. It's in your body. It's a syndrome. He wrote the yeast syndrome in 1986, 30 years ago. It continues to be a bestseller for a reason. Doctors are just now getting it. More importantly, the patients are beginning to understand it through reading his book. What I want to talk about in the next four minutes with Dr. Trowbridge is the poisonous byproducts that some of these fungi make. I think we found a couple hundred of the millions that exist. A couple hundred fungi that make mycotoxins, right? But each fungi might make 10 or 12 or 14 of these things. So we found about or, a thousand. Or more. Or more, 50 or more. of them. Yeah, I mean, some of them like fusarium, you know, and, and mm -hmm. some of the others, aspergillus, we're seeing huge number of mycotoxins being made. How do you treat a mycotoxicosis? I know antifungals kill fungus, mm -hmm. but if they've spewed their poison into my body mm -hmm. and now it's arthritis or cancer or some horrible health problem, 
How do you get rid of the mycotoxins? Well, we should just use a fancy Band-Aid. I mean, isn't that what you get from the doctor generally? Okay. Yes. People say to me, all right, so how long am I going to have to do these things you want this me to diet. do? This okay? diet. I did it a week and I wasn't Exact. I, I didn't show, see any change. And I say, look, we're, we're going to squeeze down on the fungus, that's for sure, because your body has not been able to. But we're going to build up on you. And this is how long it takes to get you better. How much damage has been done on the inside? And that's partly related to how bad was your diet before so that your system was already compromised. Yeast toxin just takes advantage of that. I call it pinch points. If they find a spot where that toxin can interfere, all this starts to back up, none of this is getting made, put those pinch points at the critical junctions, the intersections, yeah. you can stop traffic everywhere. So the deal is, is fixing a mycotoxic illness is keep from having any more come out, okay? Suppress it so and build you up. Okay, so immunity, you're talking about T and B cell immunity. Everything, not just the, those things. Your, your gut function, your brain function, your circulation, your heart, your kidneys, everything has been affected. And the immune system is here. Isn't that interesting? When you and I started, we thought mm -hmm. it was lymph nodes, you know, mm -hmm. and that, you know, 80% of our immune mm -hmm. system is in our gut, so start with diet. So what you're saying is, look, feel free to use antifungals. Absolutely. By the way, I just read clove, cinnamon, you know, some of these things that are in the health food store are just as powerful at killing certain fungi and yeast as diflucan. Yes, and, and that's why all those spicy foods have always been very good. Curcumin, yes, the yes, Indian, yes. you know. If it's got a good tangy flavor, it's probably good for fungus. And, oh, I didn't say cancer, but yes, probably. Well, I don't want to get in trouble, you, but you, you know. Don't, I know you don't treat cancer. You treat a patient right. who sometimes recover from syndromes other than you're treating, and that's probably a good thing. <laughs> While we're talking about what you do in your yes. practice, you do something called chelation therapy. Mm -hmm. And I remember the FDA, you know, 100 years ago saying, okay, for lead poisoning, Correct. chelation seems okay. But you say, gosh, we can go beyond oh, just lead poisoning. What is chelation absolutely. used for? Chelation is very simple. It's approved medications. There are several different kinds that take out toxic metals. Now, metals are toxic because they go in fast but come out slow and interfere with your biochemistry processes because they replace the good metals. Like, How do we get metals in our body? Oh, food, water, air. It's very simple. Fertilizers that they're using, chemicals. Everything, but especially the food and the water. The, the key thing about getting it in is it's silent. You never notice it. You know, people were getting poisoning from the lead pipes, the water pipes, yeah, yeah. from the lead gasoline, from the air, and from the food and such, never knowing it. So silently these things come in and wear you down over time. But then, of course, you get to see the doctor for your toxic... No, no, you see the doctor for your hypertension. You see the doctor for your blood pressure. You see the doctor for your kidney failure. And all these things have been documented as related to the toxic metals. And yet the doctors don't. Do you see a Blind. time, before you and I say goodbye, be, do you see a time when younger doctors in medical school get courses in toxicology, heavy metals, for uh, chemical fertilizers, birth control pills, antibiotics, statin drugs? Do you see a time when they'll get this? I, I think in the next 30 years, possibly. You're going to be here? Uh, I will be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's... It's so fascinating what you do. And tell me before we say goodbye on the air here, how does chelation therapy assist a person with a systemic fungal growth? Very simple. All the toxic metals that are neurotoxic, those are the ones we really worry about, taking your brain away, are immunotoxic because those tissues are very similar. Mm -hmm. So your immune system has been damaged. And especially, you know, we've got these mercury fillings yes. in our mouth, and then we get down into the gut, and that's changed by the yeast into organic mercury, and that now is terribly dangerous, and chelation helps to remove that. So what we're doing is removing things that are actively making you older, because aging is a disease happening one day at a time. Yeah. We don't yep. look at it that way, but that's how we have to treat it. Thank you, Dr. John Trowbridge. Uh, by the way, he is in the Houston area. Dear friend, really knows the yeast syndrome. 1-800-FIX-PAIN. I can't believe that. 1-800-FIX-PAIN. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And thank you so much, Dr. John Trowbridge. Boy, I love these guys. These guys have been friends of mine for many, many years. Dr. Trowbridge and I met, what, 35, 36 years ago. Folks, thank you for enjoying today's show. This is the product that Dr. Pescatori was talking about. And as I open the show, try 
the Dr. O'Hara difference. Experience it. I mean, it's really amazing. Just take as directed on the package. I take down a couple of them twice a day, and I feel absolutely wonderful. Thank you, most importantly, for joining us today. Wasn't that fascinating? I'm still dwelling on that question. What's the first thing I would do if I had cancer? I'm a praying man. I think we all should be. God bless you, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.